Hi, hello, hey, and welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am your host, Miss Jessica Rust Vibes Rushing, accompanied by Mr. David Rushed Vibes Rushing, and we are here to rush the vibe with our tribe. So what's up? You don't have a drink. I don't. <laughs> is there anything else you wanted to ask me? Or is I mean, that it's, just, just, it's just not like it. You don't even have water. No, I don't. It's, it's been a day, so I'd rather not drink anything. Mainly because I already had a drink. Mm. Today? So, tonight. Not yeah. today. In case anybody from work is watching this. <laughs> I had one tonight. But yeah, I already had mine, so I'm good. Cool. How's it going? It's going. It's Monday. It was actually a smoother Monday than I expected. How so? Mondays are just, I don't know. I think, I don't know if it's a mental thing that we've just conditioned Mondays to be chaotic and uh, back to work, but it really wasn't. It wasn't, it was a, it was a good Monday. Good. Mm -hmm. Glad you had a good Monday. Good Monday. Relax. Relaxing. I wouldn't say relax, but it was good. It wasn't stressful. Did you leave the house? No. Walked down to the edge of the driveway. Well, the middle of the driveway. For what? In the mornings when the school oh. bus comes. <clears throat> yeah. And that's about it. So I had to go to uh, Hickory today. Hickory Dickory Dock? No, Hickory, North Carolina. Um, former or current furniture capital of the world. I don't know if it's still. But it used to be. It used to be. Yeah. It used to be known for its. It furniture. seems so random for. Like there was Hickory. a like I think it was like eighty percent of furniture. There was a time where like eighty percent of furniture in the United States was made in Hickory. North Hickory, North Carolina. Carolina. So you and think you the town would offer would have more to it? Well, no, not anymore. If it's not. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you could tell it was like kind of a town built around a certain industry because now it's like nothing. There's nothing there. Like, is there a downtown Hickory? I'm there sure there is. is. It's actually kind of cute, Quaint? I think. Quaint? I think it's one of those downtowns that you already drive through it by the time you realize you're downtown. Like Waxhaw. Where's your beef with Waxhaw? I don't know. The fact that, like, by the time <laughs> I say, oh, it's downtown Waxhaw, I'm no longer in downtown Waxhaw. Why are you, why are you always got to come for Waxhaw? Because it's, like, it's such a weird... Waxhaw, for anyone who may not be from North Carolina, Charlotte area is a town south of Charlotte. Which is where my my brother lives. My brother and his family live, and actually, I guess Mark and Zuli technically live in Waxhaw. Mm -hmm. I've just yeah. never. I just, I'm just not a fan. And then I, why? I don't like the word um, Waxhaw. Why? I just don't. It makes me uncomfortable. And I just don't. I just don't see what it offers. <laughs> like it's it's a it's a down. It's like a town, but it doesn't have like a cute downtown appeal to it. I mean, it's kind of cute. It's all right. It's got a couple shops. You got the cigar lounge. What cigar lounge? They got a cigar lounge. That's yeah. where Donald and I went. Oh, is it yeah. nice? It's cool. There's, uh, I think, fire departments. Like, it's their thing. Oh. Like, when I think of cute downtown, like Belmont. Belmont has a cute downtown. What makes Belmont more cute than Waxhaw? That it's cuter. <laughs> And I guess I like the word Belmont. Okay, but what makes it cute? It's just, even though it's downtown and it's a small town, it's still, like, busy. Oh, uh, okay. I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm a very, I'm very much so a city girl. Even though I grew up in a small city, I'm from a big city. What small I, city did you grow up in? Worcester is considered a small city. It is the second largest city in New England. Worcester. So don't disrespect it. Um, I don't care about no Worcester. But um, it was not a tiny, it wasn't a small town. It wasn't tiny. Small town feel, but it was a pretty sizable city. So I like, I'm a city person. I like cities. I can't do towns. Yeah. Unless it's like a town on the edge of a big city. And maybe that's why I like Belmont, because it's still like close to Charlotte proper. It's cute. Yeah. 
So I was, I was driving to Hickory mm-hmm. and, um, I was actually on my way back from Hickory and, <laughs> you know, irony can just be really like really, really funny. So I'm, I'm driving down, I think I'm on 321. I'm pretty sure it's 321 South. And I'm, I'm in the left lane. So I'm going kind of fast. And there's this escape, I think, an old old Ford escape. And on the back of the windshield, it says, um, it's got, it's got a message written on it. And it says, Trump won. <laughs> well, it's in the kicker. <laughs> the kicker is as I'm driving past the car, and I, I don't really care, right? Like, you can feel whatever they, how they want to feel. I'm driving past the car, and on the back, the back passenger window it says wake up <laughs> as if the people who don't acknowledge the fact that Trump won are the ones <laughs> excuse me are the ones who need, need to, wake to wake up, up. and that's why I don't do small towns it was funny because the majority of the population and and you know I hate I, I do my very best right I, America I do my absolute very best not to stereotype, not to generalize, not to have any preconceived notions. I don't. <clears throat> but I knew what this driver looked like before I ever saw mm-hmm. what the driver looked like. Oh, white guy? Oh, white lady. Oh, with white a, lady. With a cigarette and her hand on the same cigarette and her hand <laughs> on the steering wheel. Mm. Uh, and that's not to say that all white ladies who smoke no. cigarettes are Trump supporters. Some but, of them go hard. But. For good causes. That makes I sense. already knew I knew what she was gonna look like before before I got to, I got to where I could see in the driver window. It was just hilarious that people and that she was telling other people to wake up because they clearly they they I, sleep. I I really can't wait for the point of history where they there's like a class, like a university class that they offer that goes into depth of this season of American politics, like the last seven years. Um, to really break down the thought process mm. of of people who saw things from that perspective. Um, I wanted to be an objective class taught by a passionate professor. And I would genuinely take this class because I, I still feel like I need to understand people's mindset. When we were all taught, like, you vote, and the person who gets the most votes is the winner. But we can still argue that the person who didn't get the most votes was the one who won. I mean, I'm, I'm watering this down cause I know like the complication with like, uh, electoral college and all of that, but I need there to be a class, a series of class lectures, master class, whatever Ted talk that truly breaks down how these people's minds or these believers minds were infiltrated that they're so passionate and strong in their beliefs that this man won the election and that this man is a person who is worth following. Because even in this raid of Mar-a-Lago, like he still has supporters and he had documents that he had no business having in his home Mm. after he was president. I think the biggest thing now is I think maybe there are some that he shouldn't have had, but I think it's more so where he had the documents but more so is, than whether he should or should not. But have. But this had is them. like Benghazi all over again. Like he like this is legitimately lock him up. Like we went crazy over a server and a cell phone and Wiener and his wife. Oh, and this dude essentially did the same thing. If you break it down, I mean, the it's, it's they're in the, in the same ballpark. So yeah, I just need I need that, and it's probably gonna be like another five years. I'm sure there are a couple of universities that are developing. Well, they gotta that stop trying to put him in jail first, <laughs> so the story can be complete at some point. I mean, he's not gonna go to jail, so it's really yeah, a waste of energy. Probably not. Because um, I didn't think they were gonna give him a master, and they gave him one. So there's that. But yeah, I just want. I want to learn and understand the f- 
foundation of his, I'm just going to say ministry, because he has a whole flock. So there's that. What am I going up against? Is it the wall? It's the uh, poster. <coughs> so what do you have to say? <clears throat> what do you have to talk about? Why do you assume I have something to talk about? I would hope you, you would, because this is... I this thought is I'm a, just the talent. You are, and part of the talent comes up with part of being the talent is having things to talk and about. Part of being the talent is being talented. Uh, but you made me force to say... My business partner, executive producer well, Jessica, I, the well, other I day. I am your business partner. Um, eh. I'm not. I'm not on the LLC. I mean, you didn't put it together. You weren't involved in putting it together. You didn't ask me to. Hmm. <laughs> Better be careful who you trust. It's the evil world we live in. <laughs> Anyways, what do you have? Why? Why? I, it's Monday. I don't have anything. Do you? You have nothing to talk about. Because you didn't have anything to talk about last podcast either. The last one we recorded. Yes, I did. What'd you have? I don't remember, but I had stuff. No, you didn't. Because I spoke. I'll, I talked about Nick Cannon. I had I'll the whole the tape. extended That was extended vibes. vibes. That doesn't count. Yes, it does. No, because you cut it off and you were like, Because no. we were at an hour and 40 minutes. And you're probably not even going to post that extended vibes because that's what you do. I ain't going to post Every it. time I do something like, like a good episode, you don't post it. Every time? So you've only, like, you've only had two good episodes? There have been like two where I like... <laughs> feel like this is one that's quality you don't post it so i decided i'm gonna take my talents to south beach okay but how do you know i'm not gonna post it because you would have posted it you don't know that anyway what do you have what do you bring to the table i have several things but All right, i, I want to know and what i you, will what expound you, upon them no nah, you're not gonna you're not gonna keep Mooching off of my so my research, just sit here in silence. I would love for you to actually have something you want maybe to speak I about. Do, but maybe I want to see where you want to go, and I'll determine. Talk about the shirt you have on. It says Barbie. Why did you buy that shirt? What spoke to you about? Because it? it's brown. But now in the camera, I feel like it's not as flattering. <laughs> well, it's a lot of brown than one it, photo it, it of you, is. the shirt, your hair. So I'm just not. I'm actually very dissatisfied with uh, how I appear in it. But I just like that it was a diverse Barbie shirt. You bought it from Target? Of course. It's cool. Tell me about your hoodie. Um, I bought it off Instagram. I can't remember the artist I bought it from. But it's basically a, just a print. But it's got um, prominent, popular NBA players from the late 90s, early 2000s. So, you know, you got... LeBron on here, Melo, Dirk, my boy. He looks like Anthony Mackie from over here. Who? Your boy. Anthony Mackie. Hmm. Chris Paul with hair. Um, Ray Allen, of course. Rest in peace. It's the Black Mamba. Uh, T Mac, Wade, Prime Shaq, Allen Iverson. So, in my nose, you know, I'm big NBA, so. That's why I'm why I bought the hoodie. But interesting, um, that you would have be wearing your Barbie shirt because um in the last episode I think it was the last episode we talked about cults. Or Barbie a cult? Sports or, or uh, culture uh fans of certain pop culture figures mm-hmm. like the Bayhive. Swifties is what Matt told me. Taylor Swift's people are called. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate it. You needed to know. <clears throat> appreciate it, Matt. He actually commented on the on the video. Shout out to Matt. And That's um, a real one. there's somebody else. Did we ever figure out does Lizzo's tribe are they called anything? They're probably the Zos. The Zos. Okay. I'm making that up. I don't know for sure. Nicki Minaj people are called the Barbs. Yeah. That's one we talked about. I hope no one affiliates me to Nicki Minaj. So she's married to a sex offender. Oh. Yeah. You don't know? Oh, it's bad. News to me. Like, I believe he went to prison for raping a 16-year-old. And then when he got out, he had to, um, he has to file as a sex offender everywhere he, he lives. Oh, yeah. This is public knowledge, so sure. Nicki Minaj married him regardless. Um, and they moved to California, and he didn't register. Hmm. 
So then he got in trouble for not registering. Because you're supposed to do that. Mm-hmm. Mm. And then Nikki and her people like went after old girl trying to get her to drop the charges, like to say that she lied and he didn't do it. And she was like, no, they were like legit harassing this woman. So a lot Nikki, of Nikki herself went after them. Nikki and her, her peeps. What did, what did Nikki do? I mean, like calling her like, Nikki trying called to, her. yeah, I believe like she had people reaching out to her. Um, they did speak to her on the phone. Like she and Nikki spoke to her on the phone. And the lady was like, no, this is what he did. He legitimately went to prison for it. So wait, if, if someone is, if someone is um, found guilty of, um, whatever, dude was, or yeah, rape. Mm-hmm. the the person who was offend, like the person who was a victim, can say it was consensual and it goes away. Well, she would probably be charged for perjury. So oh. there was that, because I mean, you lied under. You would be saying that you lied under a court, like court of law but even if you're but if you're 16 even if it's consensual it's still considered it's still statutory yeah right and i think that's what they were trying to say it was that it was like it wasn't rape it was like statutory rape i guess that might be a step down because he was he was like 19 i believe um he might have been 19 or 25 i can't remember exactly this was like a year ago that i was privy to all of this so he was an, he was an adult he was he was absolutely an adult and she was a child um and yeah, so I was kind of like questionable towards Nicki Minaj for that, but it is what it is. She married him. They have kids. That's their life. Um, but no, I'm not a Barb, uh, and that's not why I'm not a Nicki Minaj fan. I'm just yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> Kimberly Nicole Foster, you heard of her? Her name sounds familiar. Social media um, personality has YouTube, Twitter, all that so uh, comments on celebrity gossip stuff like that did she get sued by cardi uh i'm not sure because i just found out about it because this daily beast article came across my timeline but she's suing Nicki minaj because she says Nicki uh encouraged her barbs to come after her nicole when she tweeted something about Nicki that the barbs found and then it just became this big thing so on september 12th which was last week? Yeah, last Thursday? Mm, Wednesday, maybe? Wednesday? She said, Nikki is so clearly a horrible person. Negativity sticks to her like glue. Mm. I don't know if we've ever seen this before. And then apparently with, within hours, her Twitter inbox was like flooded. Usual stuff. You know, oh, why are you coming to Nikki looking like you look? You know, stuff. Mm-hmm. Just mean stupid stuff. stuff mean, yeah. mean, mean girl stuff. But apparently... They found out, like, somehow her personal information got, like, leaked, like her cell phone. Oh, no, and then people started texting her and calling her, and they were just sending her, like, just terrible stuff. Saying, like, they hope she'd get raped. <gasps> like, they know where she lives. Um, she was supposed to go to, like, a younger family member's, um, like... Um, a day where you bring somebody to school who's who's a woman who who's related to you who's doing great things, and she had, I think she had posted about it on her blog. I guess they found the blog and had found. I guess she had posted like an earlier post, like her mm, like the, saying this is what the she's going to be doing. Yeah, so they were like, we're going to go to go to the school and we're going to get your young niece or whatever, and it was crazy stuff. Now you might be asking, well, where does Nikki play in all this? But apparently, Nikki was liking the post. Which was encouraging people to keep going because you know obviously on Twitter you, you can go like in, Nikki, you yeah. go in and you see if somebody liked a tweet or whatever. So I... she's suing, she's suing Nicki Minaj. So this, and I, I want to use this as a springboard, a catapult, <laughs> a launch pad for a bigger conversation. On is. Uh, fandom, idolatry. Mm-hmm. Is it healthy? It's not. I mean, you know me. I was raised on the scripture: "Little children don't worship idols." So I, I think that's like ingrained in me. Um, mm-hmm. But, and this is kind of like this applies to Trumpers. This applies to anyone who's an extremist for any anything. Like I just, I can't understand your support for something being so 
especially someone you don't know, being so strong that you could make these kind of threats to another person. Like, I mean, I believe in Jesus and I, I like wouldn't, I don't go like that hard, like condemning people for stuff. And I mean, Nicki Minaj and Jesus are on like two different spectrums, but like, I wouldn't be like, Oh, you said something bad about Jesus. You're going like, no, I mean this, it, it, I, know, I know some people who might say that. <laughs> anyway, I just, I think, I feel like it fandom, extreme fandom could be like a sign of a void mm. that individuals need to fill. And instead of trying to find something attainable in their life or recognizing that there's a void that they need to fill, they put that into, or they allow some person who they'll probably never meet to enter that void. And I think that's dangerous. Um, look, I think it, it could stem from insecurity, whatever, it, the re rejection, whatever <clears throat> has happened, could happen. But I think like that in itself, it, it's extreme. It's unhealthy. Like you don't know this woman and granted, I mean, I don't know the roots of which she made her statement from, but even so, it's just not, it's not necessary. Like, I just, I don't understand people being mean. Like, I, and that could, that's such an elementary thing for me to say. Stop being mean. Stop being, like, why, <laughs> like, why are you mean? Like, we are, we all live our own lives. Like, yes, okay, Nikki might like your tweet, but she's liking your tweet because you're threatening a, a woman and her niece at this point. Uh, it's just, it's sickening. Like, people have issues and, and it's unfortunate that, if you're able to be that passionate about a celebrity, like imagine if you put that into something good, what you could do. So I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not okay with it. I've never been okay with people who are like excessively obsessed with a celebrity. Mm. That's always made me uncomfortable. I've never understood it. Like I've had friends who like Beyonce is their God and they will do any and everything. Like if she's doing a concert close to them in a certain proximity, they're going to see her. And I'm just kind of like, there's no one I've ever been like, Oh my God, I'm so obsessed. Like I love them so much. I appreciate people for their talent, but I, I've just never been able to like follow a celebrity in that capacity. Like I remember one time someone said, who, what's, who could you meet that would make you so starstruck that like, and I was like, I don't really, I'm not really like that big of a fan of anyone that I'd be like, Oh my gosh. Um, I mean, I've run in with celebrities. I've worked promos and celebrities have been there. Mm. I mean, no one that I like significantly cared about. Like, I mean, I, I met ice cube. I met big crit I met, I've met Kevin Hart. Like I've met people. Um, Big bun. <laughs> I met. <laughs> okay, y'all, we're gonna stop. So, I was working. This is back when I Big was. Big bun. A promotional model, and I was working for Miller Coors, and there was this tour, search for the coldest. So different rappers and stuff. I was cute with my silver leggings. So, like I said, that's the night I met Ice Cube, Big Crit, DJ Drama. And it was it was a fun event. So Bun B is there. And again, because I don't really care about celebrities, I don't I just don't be knowing. So I accidentally called Bun B. Big Bun. Big Bun. And I know he's the way he stopped and looked at me, I know he was like, <laughs> This did not call me Big Bun. Big Bun. <laughs> Yes. So I mean, I've met them. I know there are some other celebs I've met just in working. Um, and maybe that's another thing because my encounters have always had to be on a professional level. But I just I've never been able to understand people who are like, oh, my gosh, I love this person. I would give you my first board like Beyonce cool and all. But I'm, I'm not going to drop a stack to go see her. But I know people who will do that. Like no one, no one does that for me no one on the level of fame and fortune does that for me and there's no celebrity that i'm like i will fight for you in battle and defend you on twitter and cause fights and blah 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 no causes thoughts opinions yeah i'll i'll, I'll get into a tussle but like the extremes that some people go, it just, it's never, and that's, a, I know that's a psychological thing, not like a mental psychological thing, but just, 
there's just there's a reason there's something about that person can appeal to you in such a way i've never been able to understand that i've never been that kind of fan like cool i'm I'm just like oh like good songs great i like how you look nice outfit nice but i'm never i'm not the type to just fawn and be like i have to get this i have to look like them all of that so that always amazes me that when people are like kind of amazes me not in a fully negative way like sometimes it amazes me like wow that's a lot of dedication i kind of wish i knew how to be that dedicated but then it's just like it's exhausting and this person's never gonna see you boo or the odds are slim like i don't know that's just me no offense to you like play on player um i just i got too many other things to be focused on to like put emotion into something that's not attainable Hmm. that's not attainable having an excessive passionate love for a celebrity like the likelihood of me running into these people Mm. it's just not and i got i'm just tired so i got too many other things to do i just wasn't i wasn't raised like to care like that i guess if that makes sense like it's just not it's just not in my dna i'll say it like that it's not in my dna to be that kind of fan So dangerous, you would say. I think it's dangerous. Yeah. I wonder what it is about certain people who have that that effect on, like what it is about certain celebrities that have that effect on people because it's obviously more potent with like a Beyonce, like her fans are more, you can like, like you use, that was your example you used. Uh, you got your Swifties. You got your barbs, right? You got your your magas, right? Mm-hmm. Like what? Is, what? Is, I wonder what it is about an individual. I don't know that it's one thing that you can look across examples and say that it is, but it's always kind of fascinating to me. Like who becomes that like really big star or that really big celebrity, and they have their own like little cult following. Um, Illuminati. Hmm. Illuminati. The Illuminati. Oh, okay. I don't know. I know someone's thinking that. Oh, I mean, I've I've heard that before. That there's a bunch of people who are part of it, and that's mm-hmm. why. Yeah. But you know, I don't really subscribe to that line of thinking. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, my thought on it is, of course, you know, as with everything is okay up to a certain point mm-hmm. you know when you're when you're threatening everyday people for just having an opinion right which we all have we all have opinions you know that's that's a little concerning uh because nikki's gonna be all right mm-hmm. like someone some uh, a youtuber a blogger as uh, prominent as they are in their space they're not gonna hurt Nicki minaj so I don't really see the need to like Wait rally your, your barb troops and, and go threaten somebody and threaten their family members just because they said something that you didn't, they said something about Nikki that you didn't agree with or appreciate. It's kind of dangerous. Mm-hmm. And unhealthy. And unhealthy. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I have, uh, a couple of celebrities that I'm that I'm that I follow that I'm a big fan of obviously you know Denzel Will Smith Vince Carter is my favorite basketball player um who I would probably freak out if I ever well I've actually met Will so and it was cool it was kind of it was like you said it was just kind of kind of normal he, I was looking at him I was like oh it's Will Smith but he's a man <laughs> like he's, he's normal and I was like, yo, let me get a pic. And then we got the picture. I said, appreciate it. He dabbed me up. He was like, no problem, brother. And then he moved on to the next uh, the next person, which I think was Lamont. So that was great. But that was like a really big moment for me because I've, I've watched Fresh Prince growing up. 
I still watch Fresh Prince clips. Like so many of the inside story, uh, inside jokes that my brothers and I have come from like little Fresh Prince bits and 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 lines of, of dialogue. So like Will Smith has had just an enormous impact on my life just because of the the moments that have come from my brothers and I and our family watching him. Mm-hmm. So he kind of, in a way, created those moments. He's a big part of it. So same thing with Denzel, like Denzel's movies. And um, and I just think Denzel's just like a goat human being. <laughs> just like, he's just, just Denzel. Uh, and um, and I, I just love the way Vince Carter came into the league and, and dunked like no one's ever really dunked the basketball before or since. So I can get being really into someone who you've never met, who you in all likelihood will never meet. But I do think it's possible for those people to impact your life. Mm-hmm. And that means something and something significant. Um, and I don't, and I'm not saying this is what you were saying, but I don't think you have to know someone personally or have met someone personally in order for them to justifiably mm-hmm. and legitimately have impacted your life to the point where you want to support them because they've given you something. Their art support and obsession. Well, I think there could be a point where it, the lines are blurred mm-hmm. because it's, it's, it's relative and it's objective, but, um, no, I, I, I just think they've given you something, their art, their, their work, their passion for their work you know, has connected with you. And like I said, for me and my family and Will Smith, it gave us like moments that'll, that I'll cherish forever and memories that I'll always have. So, you know, I, and when those people pass, it's, you know, like when Chadwick passed, it was, it was a big deal, you know? And, uh, I have friends and I've seen people online, uh, who are like, I don't, <laughs> I don't get caught up over celebrity deaths because it's just like I mean, death is death. It's death is death. Like you it's don't sad, necess- you don't have to, to kn- you have to know somebody to uh, like learn that they've died and be like, oh man, that sucks, or see how people that who were close to them reacting to for you to kind of be like, oh man, I could kind of see how that be emotional. Like you don't have to know somebody to be sympathetic. Mm-hmm. which is so so interesting to me and, but just because it's celebrity they kind of get treated that way whereas if it's people who are friends of friends we know they get treated with more sympathy than a celebrity just because they're so it's almost like people feel like celebrities don't need sympathy they're not real people yeah like they're not real people it's just wild to me but you know people they're you're allowed to feel how you feel um but yeah i, I think the the lines can be blurred to a certain point but you know, like sending death threats and yeah, that's just not necessary. Yeah, that's that's too much. And and, and I think there is something. And can they get you arrested? I mean, yeah, if you can if you can track the phone number, like yeah. if you got the money to yeah. You know, not a good idea, people. Yeah, that's why I'm giving my phone number out. I just give yours out. <laughs> that's why I give. Uh, no, I give out the old phone number. Me too. I don't even remember. I, I don't. Oh, and I do remember it. Yeah. One time I was out and someone asked for my number. So I gave my old number. And this was right after we taught Solace our phone numbers. So Solace was like, Mommy, that's not your number. Shut. I was like, <laughs> if you don't shut your mouth. Kids, man. Goodness. I was like, I'm not trying to have this person sell me something. Yeah, that's the worst. And that's why, like, when you, uh, like, you're doing random things, like, you're just trying to inquire everything online now they want your email and they want mm-hmm. your phone number like they won't that's what the you can't get is. to the next page unless they have your email and your phone number so i just be putting random numbers yep. i'll give them an email you know but phone numbers not nah. i'm getting enough especially like after the student loan forgiveness was announced mm. oh, i'm just getting so many scams that's you're eligible for ten thousand dollars people student call me loan. and i just won't pick up and, get, yeah. and my voicemails are delayed so it'll be like who called me on monday and by thursday i get your voicemail like oh hey my bad sorry i missed your call yeah and voicemails don't be coming through. but nowadays people have realized if you call someone they don't pick up you got to text them 
because they're probably because yeah. i mean it's the new screening your calls like back in the day when you'd wait for someone to start leaving a voice i mean not voice a message on your answering machine and then you'd know to pick it up so yeah no i definitely screen my calls so people who follow up with text they're uh Go. More, more likely yeah. to get get yeah. a response from me and i do that for work because i gotta call people sometimes and i get it trust me mm -hmm. nobody dislikes talking on the phone more than i do mm -hmm. so i understand completely uh we were talking about i mentioned will smith what kind of segue is this will smith uh, and um <clears throat> you know will smith is known recently for slapping people for one thing slap now he did drop an apology he caught a tarantula okay that's great um i'm just letting you know he's known for more than just <laughs> this is slap the slap and catching a tarantula is not bad uh he did drop an apology uh, a few months ago a couple months ago and uh but has pretty much been in hiding mm -hmm. since the the slap other than the video so shortly before the oscars will smith wrapped shooting a movie 120 million dollar budget budgeted movie netflix produced by apple oh. or apple tv plus owns the rights to it at least okay. I, th I think that they were involved in the green lighting of it uh it's called emancipation guess what it's about I'll wait. <laughs> I feel like the word emancipation is only affiliated to one thing and and that's the alleged freedom of the black man after the civil during the civil war. Yeah, so it's uh it was shot outside New Orleans, um, directed by Antoine Fuqua, training day, the um equalizer, among others. And um it's about, I believe, about a true story uh, about a slave called, known as Whipped Peter, who escaped to the North and joined the Union Army to fight against his former captors. So it uh, been, had been delayed. I think they started in 2019. Obviously, COVID mm -hmm. pushed everything back. But they, um, they finished it uh, just before the telecast, Oscars telecast in, in March. So I bring this up because they won't there was it. a New York Times article that came out uh, recently, I don't think I know if it was. I read it today. I don't know if it was today, but it said Apple's in a bit of a pickle because uh, the test they've tested this in front of some audiences and it scored really well, mm -hmm. and Will's performance scored really well. So they have what they think might be an Oscar-worthy film, but the star of the film can't go to the Oscars for can't even years. go to the Oscars. Now that can't that doesn't prevent him from winning. Winning. But the slab was just this past year. So any any Academy voters may still be, you know. And if you release it this year, because the thought was they try to release it before the end of this year, which makes them eligible for the Oscars 2023. Mm -hmm. If you release it this year, you run the risk of it not even being about the film. It's just about the slab. And so it's like, do you lose by wait, sitting on an, what you think is an Academy Award winning film because of what may happen to the narrative, what, where the spotlight may go, which is on Will and the Slap? Or do you release it and run the risk of it act that actually happening and there being no, um, and the film not getting as much... Um, focus mm -hmm. as it should so this is like a couple things on one i'm just genuinely interested in what you think apple should do mm -hmm. not that they'll they'll call and ask us but just curious what they you would what, what, what you would do but also it's the bigger conversation about cancel culture right like what what else you got to do mm -hmm. right so like will's case apologized kind of at first and then a full-blown apology and we don't know what, what he's expressed in private channels, right, to Chris. Uh, when kind 
of got away from everything, realized he needed to, to do some work, do some healing, mm-hmm. released an apology, resigned from the academy before they suspended him. <clears throat> Has seen, seemed uh, genuine and uh, remorseful. So, I mean, what else? What else does he need to do? Do you think? So is it just time? Does it just time need to pass? Does it need to, we need to wait some odd years and then it's like, okay, we can forgive Will? Or is it just, is it not that big a deal? Do we not? Because we don't know, right? Because he hasn't really released anything. So it's not like you could, he released this movie and it flopped. And then you would kind of say, okay, well, maybe it's to slap if you ask people or you, you know, you get reviews or whatever. But he has, he's literally done like no work, no, no work has been released. So it's hard to say how much of that is still Mm -hmm. if 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 any if that ever was like an issue for people who would be you know voting or academy members who would be voting on it of course i guess academy members feel a little bit differently because i'm sorry i know you're waiting to speak because it kind of upstaged their their thing right it's supposed to be about rewarding hard work in cinema and it the whole show became about the slap after that so they may feel kind of slutty but I'll, i'll stop talking i'll let you since Clearly, I'm, I'm rambling. Because you keep asking this question, but then you I'm keep... I'm asking multiple questions, but I, as I think of, as I say, as I ask, I start coming up with more questions. But go ahead. But okay. I'll be sure to make those faces you made of me. I'll be sure to make the next time you're on like a nine minute. Whatever. Okay. So, I the marketer in me says... Well, one, you you talk, you brought up cancel culture. We we honestly live in a New York minute. So personally, and I, I feel like I was more bothered about it than you were. Um, I'm over it. Like I'm 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 low key tired of hearing about this lab. I'll still crack jokes about it, but in terms of like his scope of work, I don't. I no longer think that's a big deal. I think um, there have been a lot of other celebrities who have done worse things, who are known for worse things, um, who had movies released, uh, and it wasn't. It wasn't top of mind. I think someone's going to have to release work of Will Smith's. I feel that from a business perspective, Apple has a great advantage that they already have a movie that they feel is is Oscar worthy. We already know Will Smith puts out with the exception of Gemini man and a couple others puts out good work. Um, and he's black and black people are over the slap. Like black people were like, if he was white, blah, blah, blah. So I think there is an advantage that Apple could have by being the first to release work of Will Smith post the slap. Yeah, well, don't forget one of the, the, the big things about Will Smith is that he appeals to more than just a black audience. Mm-hmm. So you could, you could lose you could one demographic and it'd be a significant hit. Like black people are probably going to rock with him regardless. They are. They are. But, and it's a defaulted, it's the, it's the black default where, you know, you have to support black. Uh, but I don't think, I, I don't think that the loss of the demographic that his appeal for multiple demographics is going to be that big. I really do think people are over it. I think people are mm-hmm. tired, tired of hearing what, about it. You saw what Zoe, not Zoe, um, what's the Kravitz girl's name? Zoe Kravitz. Oh, Zoe. Yeah, you saw, you know, she was like saying she was traumatized. There are people who were like they were traumatized I, by I the. Mean, I mean, it, the only person who was traumatized was Lupita. <laughs> There we go. There goes that word again. Trauma, like everybody's Did traumatized you see by Lupita everything. Lupita had to sit right. Lupita is in every picture. Lupita is traumatized. But I think, that's the thing. Like I think nobody else, knew. I everybody think, thought it was part. Of, it was I a bit. I think everybody else is okay. I think somebody needs to release his work. It would behoove Apple to be the ones to do it because. I'm sure he has work with Netflix. I feel like there was something he was doing with Netflix. I just think it's one of those things where a certain company can gain momentum because they were the first to have Will's back post the slap. Mm. 
Will's not a sexual offender. He's not been accused of, of raping or assaulting anybody like a lot of other celebrities, producers, directors have been. He slapped someone and everybody saw it. There was nothing secretive about it. There's no guessing. We all know what transpired. I think it would benefit Apple in a great way if, one, you have this moving movie that's about emancipation because we all need to learn more about emancipation. Um and Will Smith is the star of it. Will Smith is a, he, he's a box office hit. He's a great performer. He's not just a mediocre. If, if Chris Rock had slapped Will Smith, that'd be a whole different conversation. Will Smith is the talent. Um, he is the valuable asset here. So I personally. Let's not undersell Chris Rock. Chris Rock is a legend. Didn't he have a whole affair with like Kerry Washington? Chris Rock is a legend. You can be a legend and still be mediocre. What? <laughs> no. They're mediocre uh, legends. No. There's levels to legendary. Just stop it. Um, so I, I think it's a, I think if I were in Apple's marketing, it's, see, Bozema don't work there no more because she'd have pushed for it. If I worked in, in Apple's marketing department, I'd be like, this is a gamble we need to take. She wasn't, she, she wouldn't have been on the, she was in the music the, department anyway. Yeah, she was in music. But um, yeah, I think it's valuable because the conversation. Where's she at? She's still at Uber. She was with, she went to Netflix and it was, it turned into this whole controversy. She ended up leaving Netflix after like six she months. She hasn't stayed anywhere since that's what, she that's came on to the controversy was. People were like, you know, she's got all this hype. People are always talking about her. She's amazing, blah, blah, blah. But she doesn't stay anywhere for like more than six months. But anywhere. as soon as she left, that's when Netflix like started to, to tank. So people are starting to say like, maybe she is like marketing genius and we were doubting her. No. So I don't know. Not, not, I mean, not, 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 no, 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 that was that happened. To, that had to do with the market. OK, not. I'm just saying she could be. But no, she does. She does cycle through. Um, she's like the Larry. Um, but I mean, she's like could, the Larry Brown of one could argue that I do the same. Well, yeah, you do. Yeah. We, we use our talents and when we recognize that we're not. Use your, oh, use your talents. Yeah. And when we recognize yeah. that we're not being what talents, valued. What talents you be using? This, <laughs> all the talents all the talents um you know and it, it's she's a ghanian woman i'm a ghanian woman we are not Yo, being valued Je jessica has this thing because we went out i'm 30 second 30 second time out so we went out this weekend you know how you for those of you who are married you know uh, and i've been married like longer than like a year or seven months or whatever the average is here in america you have your each your spouse has that thing that they do in public that you're just like, <sighs> but you just learn you have to get through. So Jessica has this thing where every either African or African looking person, Jessica finds a way if they're not outright Ghanaian to somehow make <laughs> their heritage Ghanaian either like directly or indirectly and then she also finds a way to try to insinuate that they're related because i guess just all Ghanaians are related somehow um and she did that this, she did that this weekend there was you, this chick you, you mean to tell me she didn't actually look. there was this chick who's black she was caribbean she was jamaican she was jamaican oh, okay i thought she was black no she was jamaican oh, I, I didn't hear that part i heard the part where she said she wasn't Ghanaian. And then I heard you the part where you said Jamaicans are basically Ghanaians. No, I said they have a close, they have a, a strong af, um, affinity for Ghana. There's a lot. There's actually a lot of appreciation that Jamaicans have. Like they see the heritage. Yeah, I there know. There was a a, reb, a a rebellion that was carried out, and the leader was a Ghanaian woman yeah. in Jamaica. So I understand that. And think about it: slaves were transported. So like there are people who uh, the pidgin English of Jamaica. A lot of the words are transferable to one of the prominent languages in Ghana, which is tree. Like so. I know tree. No. Okay. So. I'm not. I don't. I'm. I'm not familiar with tree. I'm not. I don't got the app like, on my you're, phone. You're saying it like I'm BSing people. That's not the case. I actually do know history. Like no, I, I know you know, know where my people. So I, number one, number one, before you start trying to get you trying to start trying to get the hand on your chest because I mean you try to get serious. Number one, this is a bit. Number two, let's not act like you don't know that you be you be stretched trying to stretch sometimes. But the thing is, that's because you you just you're black, so you don't have like. Because you can talk to someone like I've had friends who are like Asian and they can see the difference, but they can like look at an Asian and be like, oh, this person's Chinese, this person's Japanese. Whereas someone like us mm -hmm. will look at Asians and like, 
we can't differentiate Vietnamese, Thai. Oh, like, no, that's not necessarily true. For the most part, most the naked eye, I think you, you're, you, you just assume someone's Chinese. I think you're projecting, um, but go ahead. I think you're interrupting me and you're being disrespectful. I'm projecting. Um, when you are, and even you can, you a lot of times you can spot when someone is Ghanaian because you've been around Ghanaians, you know the facial structure, like you can hear the, the, the accent. When I looked at her, she, like her face, I've seen her face on a Ghanaian person, which is why I said that she comes off as West African. There are plenty of black people I look at and I'm like, you're black, like you're just black. But there are some people, and I said that before I knew she was Caribbean. And of course, I mean, a black person is derived from Africa, but I feel like Caribbeans are closer. It's like a, it's like a closer, sort of. Anyway, I know this is all politically incorrect, but she genuinely does have a West African face. There are lots of people who might not be born from Africa, have parents who are from Nigeria, Togo, Ghana, Sierra Leone, but their face, their facial structure is de de depicts someone who is from there, born and raised. Like, and her face did that for me. I looked at her and I was like, wow, you have, like, I, I frankly wanted to be like, you have a Ghanaian face. I've seen that, actually she favored more Nigerian, but I've seen that face in someone who was not Jamaican. And that's all that I was trying to say. But yes, it is factual that Jamaicans do have an affinity and a strong relationship to Ghana. There are pilgrimages from Jamaica to Ghana, um, part of the, the um, year of return. So I'm not like out here just saying stuff. I'm not just, you know, I, now that I know that that's something that annoys you, I will stop doing it. But it's more so my way of just okay. telling someone that you, so you favor. So what I'm not, what I'm not going to do anymore is do bits because I can't even, I can't even have fun with something that you do without you just turning into like a 15 minute history lesson that I one don't need two don't care about. Okay. So okay. I don't, well, I'm done I, I don't need, I don't need you, you don't care. I don't need you to break down like all that i mean that's that's good i don't i don't go out like and see somebody and be like yo you look x or you look y like this is not my thing okay and you do it but you do it in a playful manner so a lot of times it just comes off as you just trying to somehow make everybody got it because you're proud of your heritage you're proud of your people you're proud of where you come from which i think is great i was just trying to have fun with it i wasn't being serious i don't need you to think that just because i'm black and so that I can't identify certain things or certain things don't matter to me, which actually part of that is true because I don't care. But <laughs> I was just trying to say we go out and you always seem to come across somebody who you're like, are you Ghanaian? And they're like, no. And then the next questions you ask is almost like they're leading questions so that you can somehow make a connection to Ghana, which all I was trying to say. It's all in good fun. I'm not being serious. So I don't need you when because when you get the hand on the chest, I mean, you're being serious. I don't need the hand on the chest. I don't need that. Okay. It's a bit. Okay. I'm done. I mean, you're talking about rebellions and year returns and stuff. Like, I don't, it's not, it's not necessary. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, I don't even know what we were talking about. Go ahead. You were I'm, speaking. I'm done. You're done? I'm done. Okay. Cool. Um, I'm done too. So, uh, this episode is actually going to come in under an hour, which is nice for editing's sake. So, um, if you're, bl <laughs> if you're black and you happen to have a West, uh, have a, uh, suspicion that your lineage is uh West African, um, hit us up because you and Jessica might be related or she might be able to give you some history on, uh, on where you come from. Oh, you're not flattered? No. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube here. If you like the video, like, subscribe. Um, on Apple, Google, Spotify, tune in. We'll be back uh, next week. Actually, I think next week is going to be, we're going to run a guest episode. So, that'll be fun. Um we uh, recently interviewed uh, a friend of mine um, who was doing some really wonderful things. This is actually a genuinely wonderful person. And a lot of that comes out. All of that comes out actually in the interview. So we can't wait for you guys to see it. You'll see that next week after this episode drops. So stay tuned for that. 
Um, if you've been watching us and you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do that. Uh, we drop episodes every Wednesday ish. As I said, ish, because sometimes it's Thursday, sometimes it's Friday. Uh, but most times we try to shoot for Wednesday. So, um, hope you're all enjoying the end of your summer. I think it's over officially Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday. So, um, then it'll officially be fall. So. It's great because it's hoodie season, but also not great because things get shorter. So we'll see y'all next week. Appreciate you rocking with us, Vibe Tribe. Y'all be good. And we are out. Peace. And maybe Jessica will be talking by the next time we actually record. So we'll see y'all later. Bye. Yeah. 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 None but some grow pains. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I done came way too far, can't stop me now I done came way too far, can't stop me now I done came way too far, can't stop me now I done came way too far, can't stop me now